How much damage does your weapon do in Overwatch? You might have certain damage values memorized, such as Cassidy's 70 damage per shot, Soldier's 18 damage per shot, or even Tracer's 6 damage per shot, which was changed to 5 damage, and then back to 6 damage. But these are just baseline damage values. For many weapons, damage output is affected by the distance from your target. Specifically, your damage gradually decreases the further away you are from an enemy. This is known as damage falloff, and it's a useful tool for balancing the effective range of certain heroes. But as many players noticed during Season 1, Tracer's damage falloff was broken. Her damage did not gradually decrease with distance as intended. Instead, it instantly dropped from maximum damage to minimum damage past 20 meters. I figure now is a good time to examine how damage falloff is implemented in Overwatch. The first step of this process is the most difficult, actually hitting a shot. If a shot successfully hits an enemy, the game needs to determine how far the shot traveled. There are two coordinates that are relevant for this calculation, the position the shot was fired from, and the position the shot impacted. You'll notice that bullets are not fired from the weapon model, they are instead fired from the player's first-person camera. I have an entire video showcasing where this point is for every Overwatch 1 hero. Most camera positions are near the character's eyes, while other camera positions are... not. As for the position the shot impacted, it does in fact use the exact point on the enemy's hitbox. This means if both players are completely stationary, the amount of damage done changes depending on where you shoot the enemy. So you technically do more damage when shooting sections of the hitbox closer to you, but the difference is so marginal that it's pretty much irrelevant. Now that we have these two points to derive a distance, we can start to calculate how much damage to deal. Each hero has internal data defining the near distance and far distance for their weapon falloff, along with the minimum damage and maximum damage that can be dealt. Using Cassidy as an example, his near falloff distance is 20 meters, his far falloff distance is 40 meters, his maximum damage is 70, and his minimum damage is 21. The damage calculation is very easy for distances outside this range. When you are within the near distance, simply deal the maximum amount of damage. And when you are beyond the far distance, simply deal the minimum amount of damage. It's the range between these distances where a more granular calculation is needed. All damage falloff in Overwatch is linear, meaning you can plot all possible damage values in this range using a straight line. This can be calculated using a linear interpolation function, such as this one. But let's hold that thought for now, since there is still one more step. When we are within the falloff range, we need to normalize the distance between 0 and 1. Normalization in this context means scaling a set of data to fit a specific range while retaining the relative differences between data points. Say we have a set of numbers, 0, 1, 2, and 4, and we want to normalize this set between 0 and 1. By scaling the old maximum value, 4, to the new maximum value, 1, and applying the scale to the other values, we can say this set has been normalized. Although the numbers in the new set are different, their relationship with one another has not changed. Let's apply this normalization function to Cassidy's falloff range to see how this works. Subtracting the near distance from the far distance gives us the total range. Subtracting the near distance from Cassidy's current distance gives us his position within this range. Finally, dividing these values yields the normalized distance. In motion, here's what this looks like. The closer you are to the near distance, the closer the normalized value is to zero. And the closer you are to the far distance, the closer the normalized value is to one. Now we can revisit the linear interpolation function to perform the actual damage calculation. If this looks complicated, don't worry. Let's break it down. First, we plug in each variable. Min is the minimum amount of damage Cassidy can deal, which is 21. Max is the maximum amount of damage he can deal, which is 70. And N is the normalized distance we just went through the trouble of getting. This function is composed of two parts. 
one side determines how much of the minimum damage to deal, while the other side determines how much of the maximum damage to deal. Both parts are then added together, resulting in a final damage value. As an example, say Cassidy is 20 meters from his target, yielding a normalized value of 0. 0 multiplied by the minimum damage equals 0, so this side of the function becomes irrelevant. 1 minus 0 equals 1, which multiplied by the maximum damage equals 70. The final result is 70, which is expected since you deal the maximum amount of damage at the near distance. Now say Cassidy is 40 meters from his target, which inputs a normalized value of 1. 1 multiplied by the minimum damage equals 21. 1 minus 1 equals 0, which multiplied by the maximum damage equals 0, nullifying this side of the function. So the final result here is 21 damage, which is also expected. The real magic happens for arbitrary values between 0 and 1. Say Cassidy is 27.4 meters from his target, yielding a normalized value of 0 0.37. 0 0.37 multiplied by the minimum damage equals 7.77. 1 minus 0 0.37 equals 0 0.63 which multiplied by the maximum damage equals 44.1. The summation of these values is 51.87, which is the exact amount of damage dealt at this distance. And there you have it! You now know the process used to calculate damage falloff for every hero. But this brings us back to Tracer's broken falloff. What's going on here? While it's hard to know with 100% certainty, the behavior of Tracer's bugged falloff is what we'd expect to see when her near distance matches her far distance. Full damage is dealt within the near distance, and minimal damage is dealt beyond the far distance. As of the Season 2 patch, Tracer has linear falloff again. As compensation, her damage was increased by 20%, which is what it used to be in Overwatch 1. I'll leave you with some interesting gamer observations I made while making this video. All projectile weapons owned by DPS and support heroes do not have range-based falloff. Things like shurikens, rockets, icicles, zenyatta orbs, and so on. Tank heroes, on the other hand, do have projectile range falloff likely to ensure that tanks are most effective at close range. Though the new tank hero, Ramatra, has a projectile weapon with no damage falloff, which is interesting. The only other tank in Overwatch history who did not have projectile damage falloff is Roadhog, specifically his secondary fire. This was eventually changed in 2018, under the rationale that his gun was quote, too powerful against faraway targets. Baptiste is the only support with damage falloff, since he is the only one with a hitscan weapon. As an aside, there are no healing sources in the entire game that are affected by range-based falloff. It's true that a lot of supports have a hard limited range, but none of them have linear falloff the way damage does. Widowmaker's sniper rifle has the largest falloff distance, at a range of 70 to 100 meters. This was the same falloff distance as Sojourn's Railgun in Season 1. For perspective, this is how far of a distance 100 meters is. In Season 2, the Railgun falloff range is between 40 and 60 meters. As always, my voice is completely shot, and thanks for watching.